Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you've brought us out of so much. The sin that we have in our lives, you've given us hope. When we know in our flesh we can't stop, but Father, it's only by your Spirit. So Father, be with us today. And Father, help us to bring our brokenness to you. So that you can fix us, Father. You're the only one that can touch our lives that was just terrible, Father. And you brought us out of that. You set us up on the rock. And that rock is Jesus. So, Father, it's only you that can change our hearts. And your word that's alive. And, Father, that it comes into our hearts, and, Father, it cleanses us. Our uncircumcised hearts, Father, the hardness that's in them, maybe just because of life and what we've been through. But, Father, we thank you for your tenderness and, Father, for your mercy and grace upon our lives. Without that, we would be doomed to hell. So, Father, help us to come to you and lay down our burdens, lay down our sin, and, Father, repent of what our flesh desires. And, Father, start to follow you in a mighty way so that you can fix us up. Now, Father, bless your people. Give us ears to hear and hearts to receive. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, we've been talking about repentance. And uh, God's kindness leads us to repentance. The scripture says that. And because we see the love that Christ had for us, that he was willing to go to the cross. We think on July 4th, we think of all those that have served our country for the freedom that we had against Britain and, and Europe. You know, we, we don't understand that freedom because we didn't really have to fight for it. And until we have to fight for it, we take it for granted a lot of times. We don't appreciate the freedom that we have in our country. And even those, there's, you know, more people that want to come to the United States than probably anywhere else in the world. Why? Because of the freedom. The freedom for religion. You now we was talking in the back and I said, well, you know, Muslims can come over here and practice what they believe. But we can't go over there and practice what we believe or we'd be killed. That makes you see how freedom really works, doesn't it? And I think so many times we take that for granted. We take that for granted for those that fought for our freedom. And we take it for granted with Christ. Everything he done on the cross was done for you and for me. Our salvation has already been paid for, even if you don't accept it. It's been paid for. And that's the thing that we have to understand, that kind of freedom, a great nation that we have. And a lot of people argue about our freedom. They want their rights, they want this, they want that. And they don't even realize the cost that was paid. And I think sometimes that's just, it's terrible. And you know it's terrible for us not to realize the cost that Jesus paid for us. Every week when we come in here, it needs to be on our mind that our sins are taken away. Our healing has been paid for by His stripes. We are healed. And we need to dig into that and realize what God wants to do for us. But we need to be broken before Him. I don't think it's a co coincidence that she sang the song she did. 
And the thing of it is, when we repent, we become broken to God. And then God can fix us up. Last week, we found out that um, when we turn to God, there's a refreshing that comes. It lifts the heaviness off of your life because you finally get a revelation of what He did for us, that your sins are paid for. That doesn't give us a license to go out and sin. But that gives us a license to come to repentance. Without that repentance, following God, you can't be saved. Believing that Jesus paid for your sins, you can't be saved until you believe. You can't, you can't receive unless you believe. And you know, the best thing we could do is look at our hearts and say, every Sunday when we come in here, every day we wake up, God, what do you want to change today in me? How many of you know you got some things that need changed? Okay. So then we need to be broken before God. He likes a broken heart. It's the proud that he doesn't like. And most generally, a sin starts with pride. I deserve this or I deserve that. No, we don't deserve anything. We've got the mercy of God on our lives. And we didn't do anything. God just chose. The only thing we did was believe that He did it for us. And it's the same way with our freedom here in the United States. Without those that fought, there's nothing. We would still be under Britain's rule and all the taxes and all that if it wasn't for those that fought for freedom. And they didn't fight for their, them only. They fought for you and me. And it's the same way with Jesus. He did it for you and me. He didn't have to go to the cross. He was righteous. He didn't have to take our sin on Him. He was righteous. But He did it out of love. And you know that's where our hearts need to be. Because God is a compassionate God. But He is also a God of wrath. And that day is coming when God will judge the earth, and everyone in it. And every knee shall bow because they're really going to realize when Jesus comes back that He was who He said He was. And He did. And all those that are going to be ashamed are still going to kneel to know that He is the Lord of Lords. I want you to turn to... Um, Acts chapter 7. This is talking about Stephen's, before Stephen got stoned, this was his last sermon. And then he was stoned. <laughs> but he started all the way back with Abraham. And how the religious people didn't accept Abraham, didn't follow his orders. He went to Joseph, and Joseph saved the world from Egypt. He was in Egypt, and he was sold by his brothers. And how God used Joseph in the end to bring life to his brothers that had sold him. And that is a picture of Christ. Okay? Okay? So we have to understand that. And he's telling them about Moses and how the people rebelled against Moses. And then he gets to the end of this in verse 51. And he said, You stiff-necked people with uncircumcised hearts and ears. You know what? They wasn't broken. When our hearts get circumcised from our fleshly desires, 
we become broken before God and we repent, even he talks about their ears. They only heard what they wanted to hear and not the truth. And sometimes our hearts are like that. And most of the time, it's when in an area of our life that we got hurt. And we'll never let that happen again. <coughs> but we still need to remain broken before God and keep our hearts and our lives pliable to Him. Not much you can do with a hardened heart. It don't function right. Harden of the arteries, it don't work right. And then spiritually, if we don't cut the flesh away from our heart by using the Word of God and believing the Word of God and what God is trying to do in our lives, we are rebelling against God. And He's telling them a message here that you're just like your fathers. And that was a hard thing to chew on. But they wouldn't believe it. And he goes on. And he says, you are just like your fathers. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Have you ever resisted the Holy Spirit? And he's even talking about it back here, Stephen is. And for us to know to do good and not to do good is what? Sin. For us to know the Word and not do the Word, it's sin. And that's resisting the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart, I don't care where you're at, at home or wherever, you need to follow up with what He's saying. And how many of us say, oh God, I'll do that tomorrow? Do you know there's a certain time that God puts an anointing on your life to do it when He says to do it? And if you try to do it after that, it won't work. And I think we need to realize that we resist the Holy Spirit. Even in our services. Maybe God spoke to you during praise and worship. And you felt you were supposed to say something. You have the freedom here to do that. If you can't get my attention, come up. If we're in praise and worship and say, I, I, I heard something. Or God is speaking to my heart. Because he might be speaking to your heart about someone else that needs to hear it. And if you're not obedient, that person could be in freedom if you would just speak what you're supposed to. Because you are a vessel of God. God doesn't just speak to me. He speaks to all His people. And you have to understand that. So how many times have, if you stop and meditate on this, how many times have you resisted the Holy Spirit and later found out it was what you was really supposed to do? And by doing that, Finding out later it was something that somebody needed to hear or something you were supposed to do to make an impact on somebody's life. And that's things that we need to repent of. I'm hard hearing. And not, it's because of I can't hear out of this ear, you know? Not because I want to hear some things and my wife thinks that I don't want to hear her. But sometimes I just don't hear her, you know? And all the guys said, Amen. Amen. Well, how do you think God feels and the Holy Spirit feels when we're together and God is trying to use you as a vessel because He needs every one of us to function as one? We are the body of Christ. Ears have a certain part to do. Eyes have a certain part to do. You know, I was told somebody this week, I was thinking about this, and I said, God, give us eyes, and we can see colors with it. We can see emotion with it. Now, 
man can't even build something that does that, that I know of. And we take that for granted. And how much do we take for granted when the Holy Spirit is trying to speak to our hearts at an appointed time? See, we can be stiff-necked, just like these was. And it was all because they didn't believe in Jesus. They didn't follow the leader that was supposed to lead. You know, as I was going over my um, sermon last night, I was reading about Moses when Stephen was talking about Moses. And in verse 20, chapter 7, verse 22, it says, Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was powerful in speech. What did Moses think he had problems with? His speech. In action. And God knew that before. And we try to make an excuse. Well, I can't talk right, God. I can't do this. I can't do that. So I'm not going to listen to your spirit. Because I. And you see, that's the thing that we have to realize. That the Holy Spirit can use you right where you're at. If you will let him. You only got to be two things. Willing and obedient to do it. And then God will fill all the other gaps. He'll make you, he'll mold you if we don't have a hardened heart against whatever God wants us to do. So keep that in our hearts. We need to come each Sunday broken before him. Knowing without him we're nothing. There's nothing that we can accomplish spiritually without the help of the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God. And if we want to be seeing God do mighty things, then we've got to walk in belief, not unbelief. We've got to believe God that He's going to do this. If God can't do it, nobody can do it. And that's the hope we have. But we can't have hardened hearts towards the things of God and what He has called you for. And I'm telling you, if you just surrender, God will make a way where there seems to be no way in your life. But the biggest part is, we don't want to surrender to anybody. That's the whole theme of people's lives. Everybody wants their right. But sometimes you getting your right takes rights away from somebody else. That's the bad situation. I don't care that people get their rights. They have the right to be free here, to worship the way they want it. But don't take my freedom away from me to worship Christ because you don't worship Him. And that's what happens. But the bottom line is, we don't even realize how much God set us free. Being free from sin means there's no guilt if you do sin. And God wants us to walk in freedom. That's why He sent His Son to the cross. That's why we had wars We've only had, what, one war, two wars here in the United States in our history. The Civil War. Thinking of the other one, wasn't there? One? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Silly me. <laughs> but you see, and over there in the Middle East and over there, they have wars all the time. Don't think God don't have his hand on us. But let's just make sure he keeps his hand on us by having broken hearts for the freedom that he's given us through Christ Jesus. These people, he said, you're just like your father. And he goes on to say, verse 52 back in 7, you are just like your father's. 
Well, just above that. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your fathers did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And who is that righteous one? Jesus. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. Who is him? Jesus. And you who have received the law that was put into effect through the angels, but you have not obeyed it. Pretty strong stuff, isn't it? And you know something? If you don't receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you're going to go to hell. If you don't repent and change your ways and turn to God, God can't bring that refreshing that he promises us. Because we have broken hearts and we finally realize that our sins was on Jesus at the cross. And that's why we should run to the cross, run to Jesus instead of running away from him. What did Adam and Eve do when they sinned? To, huh? They put clothes on. That was one of the things. They what? They hid. they hid from God. And you know that's what we try to do with our sins? Adam was the first Adam that brought sin into the world. Jesus was the second Adam that took sin out of the world. Our flesh will sin. But you see, the bottom line is, are you trying to hide your sin? Are you going to give it to God openly and become broken in front of Him to make a difference in your life so that God can heal you and make a way where there seems to be no way? If you're trying to hide sin, you're captive. You're in a prison. Because you never feel good about yourself because you know your flesh can't stop doing that one thing. And there's always one thing that God is trying to work on us in. All the time he's got, when we get that one and put it under the blood of Jesus, and then Satan brings another one up to us. Well, you do this. You, he's the accuser of the brethren. He accuses them of doing it. Why do we listen to him? Why don't we know his voice? As soon as he starts accusing you of a sin that you did. And sometimes our flesh does that. We beat ourselves up. But God wanted you free. And you're still beating yourself up. We don't realize the freedom that God wanted to give us at the cross. We don't realize what he was trying to do in our lives to take away the guilt and the shame. And Jesus took that upon himself for you and for me so that we can walk free and not be under condemnation. But we'll be free of it. Because we can say, Jesus died for my sin. But you've got to be broken before God. You got to say that I'm a sinner and I need Jesus. I need that sacrifice. And when you do that, God brings a refreshing to you because you no longer have to worry about it. <clears throat> and you don't feel the guilt anymore. And you know, this week somebody in my life made a decision that I told that person not to make that decision. And that person told me that somebody talked them into it. And I says, but that's not what we decided. So I took action. I went to the head and talked to the head. Because I knew I wasn't going to be able to sleep at night. I knew it was against what God wanted. 
and against what the Bible says. And I didn't sleep good until I did it. But the bottom line is, we have to make that decision to follow Christ and his word and listen to it. And when we don't, comes the guilt in and it saturates us and then it brings dryness to our bones, the Bible says. Because we never get the refreshing from repenting if we don't repent. You know that? Go to Jesus in brokenness. Because he'll make a way, he'll refresh you. You won't have to feel guilty anymore. So repentance should be the first step we take when we know there's sin. And pray to God, give me strength to make a difference, to do it your way, not my way. And that's the difference that we have to have in our lives. They even persecuted the one, the righteous one. And Stephen told, no wonder he got stoned. You know what happened here? Everybody just leave. And that's a part of life in us. Christ in us. As being able to repent and humble ourselves before God. I can't... <laughs> <laughs> Once or twice a week, I go to the restaurant for breakfast, and there's this one lady that comes in, and and she has she has a lot of four letter words that run off of her lips, and and she comes and sits down, and she looks at me, and she says, "I got to be a good girl this day." I said, "You don't have to worry about me. You got to worry about him. You're going to answer to him, not to me." She feel, feels the responsibility of it. She knows what she's doing is not right. But yet there seems to be no repentance. It just seems to be when she's around me or probably anybody else she knows that it's a Christian. And I looked at her this last time I was in there and I said, I really didn't think I had that kind of power. And she just laughed. So, you know, we're put here to influence the world, to make a difference. And Stephen was stoned because of what he said. Because there was no repentance in people's hearts. And that's what makes a difference. I want you to go to Luke 13. Verse 1. Now what was going on here, some of the Galatians was working for Pilate, building the, the anti, the, what do you call that, duck? Aqueduct. If you look this up in your study Bible. And Pilate had some of them killed because he thought they was going to rebel against him. And then there was another group that the religious people thought they ought to die because they're working for him. Isn't that just like Christians? When somebody goes through a hard time, we say, well, they deserved it. Hello? Hello? They got what they needed. And this is the background of what was going on here. And all the people he was talking to, he knew that. They knew that. That this is what he was talking about. And this is why he replied this way. He said, there, now there <clears throat> were some present at the time who told Jesus about the Galatians whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galatians were worse sinners than all the other Galatians because they suffered in this way? I tell you, no. 
But unless you repent, you will all perish. Or those 18 who died when the tower fell on Siloam, while fell on them, do you think that they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? And I tell you, no, Jesus said. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. What did Jesus keep doing? Bringing it back to them. It isn't your deal to worry about them. Do you think they was worse sinners than the other ones? Or are the other ones worse sinners than these? And sometimes we do that. Shame on us. Even if we think it, we need to repent. Well, they deserved that. They wasn't following God. They treated me this way. They treated me that way. And what did Jesus do? He brought it right back to those that was thinking it. And he said, if you don't repent, you're going to perish too. And that's a word for all of us. If we don't turn to Jesus, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, and you don't turn to him, that's the only way you can be saved. I don't care how good you are. You don't match up to Jesus. You may be better than me, but you don't match up to Jesus. So we got to keep doing that kind of check and balance. It's not if I'm better than you or you're better than me. It's a, are you better than Jesus? That's what really counts. So you see, Jesus wants us to worry about our sin. And do we come on Sundays with our hearts broken and say, God, I'm dealing with this, and I know you've been dealing with me with this for three months, and I still ain't got it down yet. I'm not free. Anybody else got one of those things in their lives that you want to get free of? Quick temper, whatever it might be. Something just triggers something, and boom, you're gone. Zero to hundred in one second. You see, we have to worry about what's going on in our life. And even, was it Paul and Peter? Who was it that said, well, what about him? How's he going to die? <laughs> Is he going to live forever? He said, that's none of your business. We make other people's business our business. And they aren't going to answer to you. And most of the time, they won't listen to you anyway. You ever had that? Do you have children? And there's some kids that you just, they'll do everything you say because they've got tender hearts. And there's other kids that have hard hearts and they will not do one thing you say unless you beat them. Don't put that on tape. Oh. You ever had that one child? And that's how God shows us what we are doing. When God is trying to take our heart and go this way with it, and we're trying to take our heart and go the other way. It's kind of like Jonah. We're going to talk about Jonah one of these days. How many have ever run from God? No, don't lie, you're in church. That God has spoke to you about something. Or some person in the church has looked at you and said, you know what, you'd really be good at this. And I hope that everyone, this week I've called a lot of people that haven't been here in a while or texted them or called them and, and talked to them. Yeah, we've just been busy, you know. And if God puts somebody on your heart, do it. Because if they know you miss them, they're expecting a call from me. But if you call them and say, how's it going? 
I got one person. I'm glad you called. You know? They want to know you care. And that's the bottom line. Is that how God deals with you? Are you hard-hearted about those kind of things? Well, somebody else will do it. Well, in all the wars, if everybody depended on somebody else, guess what? Nothing would get done. And sad to say, that's what happens in the church. And we're supposed to be soldiers for Christ. And it should come natural. And I was, I was one that was really, really shy before. I'd miss school because I didn't want to do the stand up in front of the class and give an oral report. Why? And then all of a sudden, God started changing things. You stop and look how God brought you through things. And that's what we need to be praying for those that aren't going through, that they have repentant hearts. They're, they're tender to the Holy Spirit. There's something that just said. You know, I know a young girl that comes to the church here, young lady, not a girl, and some of you was in Sunday school when she told about the dream she had that she got left behind. And she kept having that dream. That Jesus come back and she got left behind. And I think she said for a year, I fought with that until I finally gave in. You ever been there? God put something on your heart and you put it off? Always tomorrow. Maybe not. See, we've got to be sensitive and not resist the Holy Spirit. And not just when we come to church, but every day of our lives. Your prayer ought to be, God, what do you got for me today? Who do you want me to talk to? He'll put you in front of somebody that you didn't even imagine that he would put you in front of them. And you would be able to open up that conversation. Because they say something to you first. And you need to pray that way. I was at our reunion and all the farmers were sitting there, you know, and I was talking about all the rain. And they said, Kim, what do you think? <laughs> and I looked at the one guy that said it. I said, you wouldn't listen to me anyway. And then he laughed and, I, and then I told him what I thought. See, God opens doors. We just got to be ready and willing to do that in our lives. Are you? Are you still resisting the Holy Spirit? Are we always accusing others and not even dealing with our own lives? You know, I'm just thankful that God don't dump the great whole load on us at one time. That he is patient enough to go one at a time. And you conquer one and then guess what? The Holy Spirit speaks about another one in your life, and guess what? You have to make that choice again if you're going to have ears to hear and not hardened ears, or a circumcised heart or not a circumcised heart. And if you want refreshing, and if you want God to make you new and turn something around in your life and take away the bondage that's there and really realize why Jesus went to the cross. Most people, you don't have to tell them what sin is. They already know what's right and wrong. But we're not willing to tell them Jesus took care of that. It just depends how important it is to us sometimes that we do what God says. And that's what Stephen was trying to do when he was given his, his speech. And that's what Jesus was telling them here in this sermon, in this story that he was telling them. And he goes on in verse 6 and he said, And then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted it in his vineyard and he went to look for the fruit, but it did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I have been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree, and I haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it 
Why should it use up the soil? In verse 8 it says, Sir, the man replied, Leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit next year, fine. If it's not, then cut it down. And that's just like Jesus. He wants to fertilize you. He wants to dig around your roots to get the ones out that ain't supposed to be there. He wants to tend to the things that are holding you back. But when is enough? You know, in Romans 2, chapter 1 and 2, it said God turned them over to their own sin. And all it did was get worse and worse. And if you don't repent and give it to God, that's what's going to happen. Your heart's going to get harder and harder and harder against the things of God. And God is patient enough. He give the tree one more year. Are we willing to give each other one more year? Are we willing to dig around their roots and fertilize them and help them get beyond their hurts, their brokenness, the stuff that they're going through? Are we going to be good Samaritans? You know, the priests walked on the other side. When they found the robbers had taken the Samaritan or the guy and beat him up and took everything he had. But the Samaritan... And that was the one thing that Jews looked down on, was the Samaritan. He bandaged him all up, took him to a hotel, paid his bill for so many days, and said, you take care of him, and if there's anything is <clears throat> needs taken care of, when I come back through, I'll pay you the rest. Is that the way we are? Instead of just seeing things in people that are wrong, do things to help them get out of that situation. That's our hearts. That's what Jesus would do. And that's what we need to do. This is a hospital. We all fall short of the glory of God. Not one of us are righteous. And when we understand that, we become broken before Christ and say, Father, help me. I need you. Jesus, help me. I need you. How long has he put up with us? How long did it take us to get past our secret sin that nobody else knew about but us? How long? And every day, that God waits on us to soften our hearts is a day of grace. How many days of grace do you need in your life? Whose sin is worse than the others? Is there sin any worse? No, Jesus said. So that's the thing that we need to become repentant even of those kind of thoughts in our lives. Even to, to know to do right and not to do it is sin. And when the Spirit comes, because we have so much freedom in the Spirit, even if we think it, we've already committed adultery, it said. Even if we think about it. That's pretty serious, isn't it? And that's what brings brokenness when we get our hearts circumcised. When we cut away from the flesh and the hardness of life and come to the place where we want to fall on our knees before Jesus and repent of our ways. The hardness of our hearts, the hardness of our ears was even mentioned. And God knows that we need refreshed. What would happen 
if the whole world would do that. What would happen? You know what God said? In Chronicles chapter 7, He would heal our land. He would hear our prayers. How are our hearts today? Are we tender before God and not trying to sin? but yet not feeling guilty when we do sin, but feeling remorse and godly sorrow that we talked about a week ago. Not mad because we got caught, but we're upset because we've hindered God's work in our lives. And it's made us sad that we let Jesus down. And I'm so thankful that God had mercy on me. Because of the things that i done. But God takes our brokenness and He turns them around. And if we would just repent and run to Him, church, the world would be a lot different. And the more you know the love of Christ, the more you're going to try to show it to others. And I say this over and over. You cannot serve God out of duty. It'll never work. When you start serving Him out of love because what He's done for you, it makes it all easier. Amen? And I can't wait until this young lady figures out that she's got a beautiful voice anointed by God. And don't be timid. Amen? Every time she sings, I'm saying, let it go, let it go. And you know, that's it. You're, you're free in Christ. You just got to know that. Don't let the devil beat you up that you're no good. As you did this yesterday. And you got to tell him. Devil. I asked for forgiveness for that. Did you? He can't do that because of pride. And I'm telling you. Every sin starts with pride. Because you think you're going to feel better when you do it. And the devil deceives you. And you don't feel better. You feel worse. And then we blame it on God. We're bright. We're supposed to be shining stars. And when you walk in freedom, there's a lot of people that want to come into our nation because of the opportunity and the freedom that this nation has that you can't do in a lot of other countries. And why do they come here? Some come to change us. But we have to understand the people that paid the price are the people that we need to be thankful to physically and spiritually. Amen? And as we look at the fourth, we look at what it represents the freedom that we have, our our country being born, and the forefathers that wrote the Constitution, and everything had to do with God. And now we got people that want to take it out. And the day we do that is a day of ruin for this country. But you know something? We got to trust in God, not politicians. Amen? God has a plan. He has a purpose. And He's working it all out. And He has a plan. I mean, what can you do about your life? There's times you can't make a difference. There's times you can. One way to do that is accept Jesus if you never have. 
Don't be hardened hearted people. Have you ever talked to somebody and you hear what they're saying but you don't know what they said? Because you was thinking about something else and you was... Happens a lot spiritually. Life tends to get in the way and crowd out that spirit. So if you don't know Jesus, don't leave here without him. Don't be like the forefathers that hung Jesus on the cross and persecuted the prophets that foretold of him. And then they crucified the one, the only righteous one. They nailed him to the tree. And basically, if you don't believe in Jesus, that's what you're doing. You're never taking him off the tree. You don't believe he is who he said he was. And it's the only way you can be saved through the name of Jesus. So if you've never done that in your life, hurry and do it. Don't let one more minute come go by. Because without him, if you die, you may not have time to ask for forgiveness. People say, well, when I get old. Some people don't get old. They die before that. We never know when God's going to take us home. But be thankful for the freedom that Christ gave us when he hung on the cross. For you and for me. And if you do know that, are you being sensitive to the Spirit of God? He's got a plan for you. Have you heard the plan for you? If some people keep walking up into you and say the same thing and you think, ooh, that's what God keeps telling me in my heart. I don't want to hear it. Now, if he told you that, he will make it happen. But he can't make it happen until you come before him broken and repent of your ways, not wanting to hear him. Amen? Let's stand our feet. You know what? In every <clears throat> There's new mercies every day of our life. If we mess up yesterday, it's, God is, if we repent of that and we, we ask for forgiveness and we know we're doing it, sometimes we just never ask for forgiveness because we've got our mind made up that we're not going to do it. Somebody else can do it, God. But you know what? You're missing a miracle that God wants to do in your life. Because you don't believe he can do it. And that's what you're really saying. I never thought I'd be doing this. Some of you wished I wouldn't be doing this. But I'm telling you. God had a plan. And he kept opening doors. He kept making a way where there seemed to be a way. And it just marveled me when I read that. That, that Moses was great in speech. And yet, what did he tell God when he went to the desert, the burning bush? I can't speak. You know, sometimes we think we can't do some things that God really wants us to do. And you know when he, he killed that person that was beating up on his people? And then the two guys that was Israelites was fighting the next day? And you know what that person said to him? This astonished me. That person said, who are you to be a judge over our lives and rule us? When he was the one that was going to be freedom. Then God sent him to the wilderness for 40 years. And then guess what he said? Set my people free. Isn't that amazing how God works all in the details in there? And there's sometimes, I say, God, why don't you call somebody else? You've never said that, have you? I just want us to search our hearts, people. If we want to see amazing things from God, we're going to have to be obedient. We're going to have to repent for our unbelief in our lives that God can't do this. God can't do that. He'll never do this for me. He'll never do that for me. Well, you keep saying that and guess what? It's not going to happen. It was done on the cross, your healing. You just got to start thanking him for that and quit saying you can't do it. And see what God does. Quit cursing your life. 
Amen? Ouch. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for your word, the amazing nuggets that, that is in there. Even how Moses didn't believe that he was a good speaker. Even, Father, that he didn't have power. And all of us come to that place in our life, who am I? And Father, in a way, that's a good thing. But if we know who we are in Christ Jesus, that's what makes the difference. And that you can make a way where there seemed to be no other way. And you did that for our sins. You placed them sins upon your Son, your one and only. You sacrificed. And so many times I think of Milena. I don't know if I could have that kind of faith, willing to give up a kidney for someone else. What a sacrifice, Father. Just bless her and her family. And Father, yet, we won't even speak to other people of you. Someone who's paid the price for us and died for our sins. Father, forgive us. Forgive us as we, our hard hearts, Father. Soften them so that you can mold us and make us into what you want us to be. Help us, Lord. Strengthen us. And Father, help us to see the beauty of being broken for you. So Father, bless each one here. Let your Holy Spirit remind us of the words, Father, that they've heard today. And Father, that we are mighty in your name and your son's name. So Father, send us to the people that need you the most. And Father, we'll give you the praise, the honor, and glory. Use us as vessels of honor for you. As you did Joseph, as you did Moses, as you did Abraham. What an awesome God you are. Now, Father, break the chains on your people. The bondages that are holding them enslaved, Father. Maybe even their minds, they feel guilty. They haven't realized the revelation of, of Jesus dying on the cross for them. Father, set them free. Break those chains. And Father, we'll give you the praise, the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Greet two or three people and you're dismissed. <laughs>